before I can do anything today, I gotta fix this grinder. Um, it has a problem in the cord, and I know it's self-inflicted because I have a habit of when I'm done with a grinder, I put it down on the ground like that and I lower it by the cord. I'm gonna try and stop doing that, but the likeness that I won't is pretty high. So I need to find out where that break is in this cord and hopefully I can shorten it up and put it back together. It's not as powerful as my other, my Bosch. Um, I have another Milwaukee, but the brushes are out of it. It needs fixed too. I don't really want to mess with that today, but um, I need to buy new grinders and I've been thinking about it and thinking about it. I don't like DeWalt tools. I don't want DeWalt tools. I thought about buying a Bosch because the Bosch I'm using actually is belongs to my son. So I thought maybe I'd buy him a new one to replace his that I've kind of confiscated over the years um, and then get a second one as well but uh, I haven't pulled the trigger because this thing has been such a financial strain on me as you can imagine no income for six months uh, hasn't been easy on us but uh, anyways let's see if we can locate where the problem is in this cord and see if we can fix it Right there. Well, I don't want a cord that short, so I think we'll cut this off right here, put a cord cap on it. So it looks like the neutral was the one that was cut. And it looks like I had dropped something on the cord. Anyways, let's get us a cord cap. When I was skinning back the outer black insulation here off the wire, I accidentally got in a little too deep. And I got into that insulation on that wire, so it's very important you pay attention to that so I just cut it off and start over and now we're now we're back to where we need to be and I've looked at it real close and we're okay so this is a cord cap I'm gonna use and it's important to match a cord cap to exceed match or exceed the amperage draw of, your, of the tool that you're putting the cap on so also you need to match. If yours has three conductors in your cord, you need three conductors. This one here is for what's called personal ground, personal safety, personal protection, I guess is the best way. But if you see here, our cord only has two conductors because the body of our tool is plastic that houses the electric in the motor. So if this was metal, more than likely to have another ground in here or we'd have a ground which would protect you, help protect you from uh, any electrical short that would be, uh, that could touch the body, a metal body of the part of the tool. So you gotta match all that up. We're gonna use this, this is a Leviton cap, and then we're gonna put these on uh, these screws. Now, it's very simple. The gold one, the gold screw is for the black, the hot, and the silver screw is for the neutral. Uh, I don't just put them underneath that washer and crimp it down because uh, the nature of this tool gets pulled a lot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use crimp on or stake on eyelets. That way they're underneath that screw and they'll, they'll be hard pressed to pull out with a crimp connection. Plus we're gonna take this off. We're gonna crimp it and then we're gonna solder it we'll put heat shrink over top of it. So it'll be really tough to get that wire to come out of there.
All right, it's important that we don't strip this back too far. We just want it to go in the body of the crimp connector and just be able to see the end of it come out like that. Now, we're gonna use these. These are meant for uninsulated crimp connectors. So you see how it has the thing that pushes down? Well, I don't want that on the top because it just deforms the top, so we put it on the bottom. Put it in the valley here, put it in the right slot for 12 to 14, and crimp her down. Normally you'd want to get your heat shrink on before this, but the heat shrink I'm using is 3 to 1, so it's quite a bit bigger. Put that in there. I'm going to strip that just ever so slightly more. these twice end up with that scrimped on the bottom now we're going to solder these set this up so it's easy to get the soldering iron on it I'm using the walkie m12 soldering iron I really love this thing. Put a little solder on here once it's ready, and then touch the terminal. Let's see. Seems to help transfer the heat. And then push it in there, just like so. And the same thing here bit here helps transfer the heat and away we go okay now we'll let that cool I get uh, this heat shrink with adhesive in it from uh, Amazon it's got the adhesive inside it It's a lot less expensive from the last place we get. We got them, huh? Yeah, for sure. That was awful. Okay. See how that went over just nicely. So I cut them a little bit of an angle. Normally I use a torch, but my, my hobo freight torch is on the fritz here. And uh, it's doing all kinds of weird stuff. <laughs> Can't imagine that. Of course, yeah. you have had that for a while. <laughs> like the all or nothing yeah I've tried adjusting it um, whatever I think I bought four of them at one time because I figured you know they wouldn't last very long okay so we're gonna look at the two you can see the one on this side is quite a bit taller than this one this is a silver side It's one of those days. Okay. Silver screw is for the white, which is neutral. So we want to make sure we're looking at that. Look at it like this hot side neutral ground. 
This is our neutral here. Come on now. I don't do well with little bitty things, actually. This part goes in too. We might as well put that on. It's not going to hurt anything. There was a time when I didn't struggle so much with these little pieces. Or vision, or bending over. Come on now. Yeah, it happens. Just needs to get down underneath there. Come on. I can't bend over like that. It's killing me. So this little metal thing has to drop down. It's like the this terminal needs to push in a little. deal with your birds today oh i don't know have you told them about them no there's a that coffee can up there there it's an ex place for the semi exhaust to go out and it's capped off with that well they still get in the pipe from outside and then they chirp and carry on it's always blackbirds that are in there starlings or whatever and they're such a nuisance. All you had to do is take the camera away and suddenly it went, went right on. Of course. No troubles at all. Okay, black is a hot. The, uh, we have an exhaust like that in the other part of the garage, but we capped off the outside. We probably should cap that off so they'll quit getting in there. Is one time I'll use a flat blade screwdriver just to make sure they're tight. Some crazy birds. That's All a right. weird noise they're making. All insulated. <clears throat> Protect each, each one from one another. One. One another. Let's see. Doesn't want to go in one way. are such a weird coarse thread they they go a long distance for just a little bit of thread you watch it somebody mentioned one of the videos like man your birds are awful chatty <laughs> no. it's because they're very close <laughs> yeah I wonder if I should put some heat shrink on this this is I don't know the rest of the world puts these on and doesn't put heat shrink on them okay let's see if let's see if our electrical skills are good enough okay guess that one's fixed now you can go to work with your little grinder that you like. Oh, goody. Yeah, I'm sure you're thrilled. So mm -hmm. I'll get this changed out to another one. Look at this. I don't know why this does it. A lot of these DeWalt wire cups, they'll come apart at one particular spot, but not the rest of it. Hmm. Like most I'd... of them come off easy, like evenly. I thought I was gonna use a flap disc, didn't you say? No, not oh, yet. God. Okay. All right, that's it. That's how we put a new cord cap and fix my grinder.